Different career tracks require different preparation. Some examples of preparation include formal education, training, skills, and expertise. So how do I know what type of preparation I'll need for my career? There's no one size fits all. It's based on the type of career you want. Not all careers require having a college degree. But for example, if you want to be a doctor or an accountant, you'll definitely need one. No matter what career you choose, you learn most of what you do on the job. But what if I go to college? Won't I just learn everything there? No, that's a common myth. You'll definitely learn a lot of theory in college that may help prepare you for your career, but it's a lot different when you're working in the real world. The real world. Ah. You'll face plenty of situations that aren't discussed in the textbooks, and you'll have to learn on the job. Even when you're out of school, learning never stops. Learning never stops. Learning never stops. In most jobs, your salary will be based on your education and experience. Which is the most important in determining how much money you make? I want to make a lot. When you're new to the workforce, you likely don't have much experience, so your education will be the most influential factor. Keep in mind, education doesn't just have to do with college. It can also be going to a vocational school and learning a trade. Oh, okay. The longer you've been in a certain career, the less important your education becomes because you have a ton of experience. Working in a career for 20 or more years will teach you far more than any textbooks or classes can. Think about longevity when deciding what career to pursue. What does that mean? You want to choose a career that will stand the test of time. Think, will this job or career be around 20 to 30 years in the future? Oh, okay. Also, you may want to think, can I see myself doing this job or working in this career for 20 to 30 years? Or is this something that bores me? Mr. Leonard, what was the first job you had? When I was 12 years old, I started refereeing soccer games. I enjoyed it. They paid well, $25 per game minimum, upwards of $40 per game. And it's nice to be outside and exercising while you work. Was there anything you didn't like about it? Well, I had to get used to crazy parents on the sidelines screaming at me. It's just a part of life though. It definitely helped me develop some thicker skin. One simple way to realize the value of your job from the perspective of your boss is to ask yourself this question. How easy is this job to learn and do? Can anyone learn to do it in a week or a month? Or is it a lot more specialized and take a lot more learning and training? How does that translate to your salary? If the job is easy to learn and do, you're likely to get paid less. If the job is hard to learn and do, if not everyone can do it, you're likely to get paid more. Interesting. I'll definitely take that into account when choosing which career to pursue. One simple way to realize the value of your job is to ask yourself this question. How replaceable are the employees at this job? If everyone were to quit today, would your boss even care? Could they hire and train people to fill in immediately? Or would it be an absolute disaster for the company? How can I avoid being replaceable? Always be going above and beyond. Always be trying to provide as much value as you can. You want to be so integral to the company that without you, everything would crumble. What is the difference between a job, career, and profession? That's a great question. A job is work a person performs regularly. Paid in money, Usually hourly. A profession is a type of job that requires special education, training, or skills. These are usually higher paying jobs. And a career is a job or profession that one does for a long period of time. Ah, I get it now. Thanks, Mr. Leonard. Most people start their careers doing unpaid or lower paid work. Is there any way I can avoid that and make a lot of money right now? It's not necessarily a bad thing to start out with lower pay, as you have little to no experience, so you have little to no leverage. Once you gain some experience and start to gain some leverage, your pay should should increase over time. If you do gain experience and your pay doesn't increase, it may be a sign it's time to look for other companies that value you more. Oh, okay, that makes sense. What is the corporate ladder? I've heard my parents talk about it and I don't understand what they're saying. The corporate ladder is a way to view getting promotions and rising in the ranks at your company. I think it's a better analogy to call it the corporate pyramid since it's more of a pyramid structure. So how does it work? Ideally, the better you do at your job, the more value you provide to your company, the more you'll get promoted and climb the ladder. On the ladder. However, life isn't fair and it rarely works out like this. People often get promoted based on networking and relationships, and it's not always based on performance and experience and results. 